Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, and I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we have got a great show. I love um, music and people that uh, express themselves through music and share that so much with the world. And we've got a wonderful person on today who is sharing with us some difficult things. And uh, well, why don't you introduce her, Heidi? Because I know she's in your realm of some things that have happened to you also. Absolutely, mom. We're talking about the fact that you are not alone, pregnancy and infant loss. And like you said, I'm no stranger to that because I've, I've had two miscarriages. And our guest today is Becky Norquist. And she has written a book called Before We Said Hello, Finding Hope After Pregnancy and Infant Loss. And she also has a newly released CD and a song called Soft Rain, which is beautiful, which we will play at the end of the show today. And she and her family have endured five pregnancy losses and one stillbirth, a little baby boy named Nicholas. Welcome to the show, Becky. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you ladies today. Well, Becky, how did you get, I know you were a singer songwriter and tell us about how you got involved in dealing with pregnancy loss and singer songwriting and all that. Mm, well, for much of my life, I've been through a lot in my life, um, but music has always played a really instrumental role. And in, honestly, I believe God's used it to help me survive a lot of trauma since I was a small child. So it's always been, uh, forgive the pun, instrumental in me, um, yeah. not just surviving, but thriving and processing through painful moments. So it's kind of that natural segue when I get through something really hard, when I'm facing that, to turn to music as well as the Lord. But really, music has been the tangible thing in this world that has really helped me through, too. Mm -hmm. And you sang at a party uh, or an event. You were with some people. And you. how did you get involved in doing pregnancy loss? Well, that, um, I actually attended a private concert that Steve Seiler, who is the founder of Music for the Soul, a nonprofit organization that um, they discuss and address all sorts of really difficult topics through music. And um, so we met at this private concert and it was really funny because we had a friend, a mutual friend that said, oh, you gotta hear Becky sing, you gotta hear her sing. And he's like, she's, so, she's got such a great voice. And he's like, yeah, sure she does. Which people from Nashville, they get told this stuff all the time. So. <laughs> I wanted to crawl under the couch because I was embarrassed and he wanted to crawl under the couch because he hears this stuff all the time. So after we were done, he's actually talking about another project, um, child sexual abuse is very dear to my heart, also part of my story. And uh, I went up after and I said, thank you so much for what you do. It really means everything to someone like me. And we got talking. He's like, have you ever recorded anything? And I said, well, yeah, I just recorded ordered a demo in Nashville with Nashville Christian songwriters and so well, can you send it to me so I did and along with it it was a song called you're with me which is also on soft rain and it was born out of uh, two years where we had the we had all the pregnancy losses then we had our stillbirth mm -hmm. but then following our stillbirth we had my mom died my father-in-law died my brother died um, wow. we had aunts and uncles and cousins and friends and then my friend suddenly died of a massive heart attack in my basement and I found wow. her and could not revive her so I wrote the song you're with me from that place and that was the song I sent to him and he said you know I just I just wrote a song for pregnancy and infant loss and you're the one that has to sing it so that's how it kind of started wow that's powerful yeah. that's Very. unbelievable to have all those losses and it sounds like mm -hmm. you helped yourself heal through your music mm -hmm. You know, I feel like music is the gift that God gave, you know, to help me to be drawn deeper into him, but also it helped me mentally as well. So it's truly a gift to me. Music is. Mm -hmm. 
Has there ever been a time when you couldn't sing because of the trauma or it, mm -hmm. have you been able to sing right through it? Yes. Um, in fact, the day that before I started sing, uh, writing, you're with me, Dave and I laid in bed one morning, just crying out because we're like, God, where'd you go? What did we do? Did we do something wrong? You know, and you just kind of lose your song because the wrestling is so hard. And I've had other moments in my life where my song was silenced, but eventually it finds its way back. And, um, and those are hard days to get through when it's so dark and so heavy that it's, it's all you can do to just take a breath in, you know? I know there are people who are listening now who maybe it's not music and maybe writing, you know, whatever. They've had a creative bent and they're, they get stuck, uh, they tell me, after they've had a traumatic loss. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'll go back sometimes and read through my lyrics that I've written or I listen to other people. I turn on worship music. I love worship music. Um, I have my favorite playlist too that I rely on and let somebody else do the singing for a while. And that's okay because eventually you heal enough where you can start processing through the pain through writing music or playing or singing. Um, in my childhood, as I process through really painful events, I mean, I would play, I play a French horn. So I would play my French horn for hours at a time and just get all my frustration out that way. Once I was ready, you know, but I think timing your spirit knows when you can make its way back, but you let other people do the singing and playing for a while sometimes. I love that. I, I just, uh, that's a wonderful thought. Let other people do it for you for a while. I like uh -huh. that. Don't you, Heidi? Absolutely. Because we have to. And and I'm wondering, okay, so you've written a book called Before We Said Hello, Finding Hope After Pregnancy and Infant Loss. And I know that you found hope through your music, through letting other people help you, et cetera. What else has given you hope? I mean, talk about your book and what have you learned in your journey um. along the way? Oh my goodness. You know, talk about coming from a dark, dark place of pain and loss and never think it, thinking it can ever turn into anything good or hopeful, right? Um, I have to say, I myself have learned, I, I wanted to say to people more than anything, you're not alone and your baby's life matters. You know, those were the two things that I felt were really important in the book. Um, certainly, I think for my own personal comfort is to realize that there are so many walking out this journey and walking out this, this painful moving forward um, that um, to know that you're not alone in it, that you're not the first one to have experienced it. You won't be the last one to experience it. Um, and people understand, there are people that understand, even though it's kind of, people tend to be kind of quiet about it. So that's been really encouraging to understand that. And also to realize that even though my children have never, their feet haven't touched the face of earth, they've mattered in a way that they've had impact. First of all, they've had impact in my life. They've had impact in those around me in their lives. But then, you know, tangibly, I've been blessed to see the impact through this book, which never would have been written had I not experienced the loss. If you can kind of see on the top, these little footprints right here, mm -hmm. that? those um, are Nicholas's footprints. They uh -huh. put them in front of the book. So literally it's like his feet have gone all over the world. And, mm -hmm. you know, to have an impact as a believer, like, you know, my faith in Christ is, is the most important thing to me. So to know that he's had impact in helping other people and helping them process and grieve, that's my son's life. I mean, what more could a parent want for their child? And then um, it's been great knowing too, just hearing other people's healing processes. Like in the book, there's men and women who have walked the same road in different ways because everybody's story of this loss is individual. So the fact that there are all these different perspectives given has been a hope bringer for me because um, you just hear how they have processed and how they've carried forward into life, but yet they have that underlying uh, message of hope too, as they've shared their stories in the book too, if that makes sense. It does indeed. And you give us a little uh, taste of uh, your song, Soft Rain, and tell mm -hmm. us about it. 
why you wrote it, what, what it means, and uh, give us a little. Yeah, Soft Rain uh, was written by Ellie Dent and Steve Seiler. It's actually not one of mine. I think it applies to anybody who's listening. It's lost something, right? Okay. So, All right, let's um, do that. Initially, it was, it was written regarding uh, the part of my story that's uh, focused towards abandonment and divorce, but it applies, like I said, to, to things of any kind of loss. Right. Regardless, um, grief is grief. Right. right. Your grief is your grief. It's so, you know, I mean. It's, right. It's well, give us some of the words and then give us a little taste of it. It starts out the road out ahead seems forbidding. Full of shadows and turns through the unknown. The wind is in your face and you feel so out of place and there's no way to get back home. You wonder how you'll survive in this parched dry land and then the sky opens up and by mercy's hand, a soft rain, a soft, soft rain falling gently all around you. Uh, these cleansing traps from heaven are the Savior's healing tears flowing to wash the pain away like a soft, soft rain. So I have to sing a little bit to remember sometimes. <laughs> but that. yeah, I mean, it's really, because the other thing that we hear a lot with pregnancy and infant loss is that there's a lot of times they go through infertility after multiple yeah. losses. And there's so much heartache and heartbreak with that too. Along with, um, there's, um, I'm running into a lot of people who are post-abortive Mm -hmm. And they're grieving, they're grieving mm -hmm. multiple things mm -hmm. and they have every right to grieve, you know? Right. So, I mean, there's just all these different applications and everybody's- well, like you said, it's, it's, it's Becky, it's very complex. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my yeah. own case, I had many years of infertility mm -hmm. and treatment and, you know, everything mm -hmm. that, that entails and then to have a miscarriage and then to have another miscarriage and you know, mm -hmm. people that say, at least you're going to still, you're, you can get pregnant at least this and that, those aren't helpful. And yeah. well, you'll probably go on to have another child, which I did, but not biologically. I adopted a mm -hmm. wonderful daughter. So, mm -hmm. you know, people will say things to make you feel better, but sometimes it minimizes your loss also. Absolutely. And that's another song on the Soft Rain Project It's called Why. Mm -hmm. And it's all the things that you don't say. You mm -hmm. can't tell me why. You know, I mean, it's it, the chorus is like, you know, God, God, you know, you hear that God must have needed another, another angel. No, if God needed more angels, he would need more. <laughs> That's true. You know, and, and just Absolutely. different things you can, don't tell me you can always have another. That God must exactly. have needed him more than his mother. Mm -hmm. give, um, please think before you speak. I know you mean well, but you can't tell me why, you know, I mean, it's just. It's, oh, like it's meeting people in that place that, you know, there aren't words, words don't erase grief and pain. They just don't, you know, I think a lot of, um, Jesus and how Lazarus is dead in the grave. And they're like, where were you? If you wouldn't, have, if you just would have showed up when you would have should have shown up, we wouldn't be going through all this and, you know, all that stuff. But Jesus shows up and he doesn't preach a sermon saying, Hey, look, I'm the son of God. I mean, he looks at their faces and he sees their tears and he does the ministry of what the ministry of presence he stops everything he doesn't say a word he sits down he weeps mm -hmm. you know he's present for them and so i always encourage people you know you don't know what to say well there's a good reason you don't know what to say because there isn't anything that you will say that will make it better but i love the idea of your album and music can be a quiet way for people to not say anything. Now, tell us about your project, the Suffering Project. I'm not sure exactly um, how that goes. Well, you know, it's it's funny because we didn't intend to do a project. We intended to just do before we said hello. And then I had written a song called Heaven's Playground. And then Tony Wood, who's another fantastic award-winning songwriter in Nashville, and Steve Seiler, who's also an award-winning songwriter, um, they came in and helped me polish it up a bit and finish it off. And, um, you know, and then we put those in the book. So when you buy Before We Said Hello, you get Before We Said Hello, the song, and Heaven's Playground, the song um with it but then we added two more songs which was why which is the things you shouldn't say and when like you know that's another question i'm sure you can really with this when are you going to get over this 
-hmm. you know, and the truth is never, never. I'll carry my children with me forever. And though I might have more or I have other children, you know, um, I said to my husband, I said, I just want to ask which of your children would you want to trade? Mm -hmm. Because they're all individual. So that was um, the song when, so we call that the before we said hello sweet. Well, then as I started sharing my story and speaking more and more and music for the soul heard more of my story, uh, which includes child sexual abuse. Um, I was abandoned after 20 years of marriage um, and divorce with four kids. So wow. quite a journey there. And, um, you know, those were um, also places. So then we added innocent child and more than a survivor for the sexual abuse topic in my life too, because that was something that was within the church. My, my dad was a pastor and I was abused within the church. So wow. all those really light fodder, right? <laughs> light, light topics we're talking about. But, you know, um, they, they're so great in the way that they use music that I, I said to him, I said, this isn't going to sound like a dirge, is it? Because <laughs> it's not easy stuff to sing about. But um, when you get to work with these people, they're just brilliant musicians and talented writers and talented singers, vocalists, the people doing, you hear these people all over the world. Like they are the top notch people that they hire for things. Um, it comes out really beautifully and in a way that I feel like when I was sitting in the depths of my depression and despair in these places, um, it was, it would have been great to hear music like this that's honest and it doesn't offer a quick fix. Um, it's not cliche. So, and that's all of the music for the soul stuff. It's just not, it's not cookie cutter. Right. It's not, we're gonna solve your hurt in three minutes and 30 seconds. You know, it's okay to grieve what you need to grieve. And it's important that you do. I love that. Now tell me how we get, how our listeners get this. Um, the best way is to go to musicforthesoul.org. And that's where you can get the book and the, pro the entire project. We have CDs. They can also send you digital downloads. And like there's other topics that they handle too, from suicide survival um pornography addiction eating disorders um caregiving all sorts of different topics you can find that all in the music for the soul website uh the other way is it's everywhere streamable so itunes spotify pandora all those places you can get most of the music for the soul um projects but soft rain all the songs are in there too Oh, well, thank you so much for being on the show today. And we're going to go out with your wonderful song, sing your mm -hmm. singing. We want to thank everybody for joining us on the show today. And Heidi and I always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless.
Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.